When you hear the term state-owned enterprise, you probably think of China or Saudi Arabia or perhaps even one of these uh, European countries that has a quasi-socialist government with uh, free enterprise markets inter intertwined. But did you know that right here in the good old United States of America, there have been a number of these enterprises that have been available to invest in? Well, have these made wise investments? What should you look out for if there's a potential government-owned or government-sponsored uh, corporation that's uh, available on the open market? We'll talk about that today. Hi, I'm John McNeil. This is the Invest Strong Network. Welcome. So, in the last 25 years or so, uh, I've invested in a large number of stocks and companies of various sorts. And one of the more interesting subsets of the investment market has been these government-owned or government-sponsored or something like that enterprises that, um, that have been floated on the open market, right? Now, I've invested in several of them. And to be honest with you, the results have been disastrous. And that's putting it nicely. All right. So let's get right into it. The first uh, of these corporations is the former United States Enrichment Corp. Now, USIC, as it was known, uh, basically took raw uranium and um, refined it, processed it, made it available for uh, for weapons programs and also for uh, weaponry and also um, energy production. Now, this, at, in the 1990s, it was decided that, well, you know, with the Cold War over, we really didn't need USIC to develop so much uranium for nuclear weaponry. So uh, they began to uh, provide uh, enriched uranium for uh, for energy um, electricity production to various nuclear power plants and whatnot. And they also had a little submission of taking Russian or former Soviet uh, uh, nuclear weaponry and enriched uranium, uranium, taking it, making it available to be used in the uh, energy production markets in the United States. Okay, sounded pretty interesting. Now, I must admit, I didn't know that much about it, but it seemed like an, an interesting, you know, thing to invest in. I mean, you know, the peace dividend, as they were calling it at the time. So uh, through a dividend reinvestment program, I, I invested uh, 250 bucks in United States Enrichment Corp. Now, uh, in 2014, the company actually changed their name to Centris Energy, which is the contemporary name. But whatever you elect to call it, uh, this uh, investment has been horrendous, right? Uh, uh, when it was first floated on the open market, uh, it had a share price that actually went as high as a couple hundred dollars. Uh, but it is currently trading at uh, a mere six dollars and change. Uh, its future going forward is who knows. Uh, this, no, sir. This was a terrible investment, right? But as bad as the investment in USIC was, it pales in comparison to the absolute catastrophic disaster of investing in two other government-sponsored uh, enterprises that floated on the open market on the stock exchange. And you know who they are, uh, uh, Fannie Mae uh, and Freddie Mac. Now, actually, they still survive, right? And their stocks are still traded. Uh, Fannie Mae, ticker symbol FNMA, uh, was as high as uh, $86 a share back in the uh, early 2000s. And uh, basically both Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, Freddie Mac, ticker symbol FMCC, they basically cobbled together mortgages 
from uh, various uh, persons who had you know mortgages, uh, cobbled them together as securities, chopped them up into pieces, and then sold the securities on the open market. Right now, this is fine during the housing boom. They did great. But when the housing boom came to a crashing end in 2008 and 2009, both of these stocks went careening into government ownership, right? Where they exist even until this day. Uh, their stocks now, both of them in the penny stock range, if you even want to bother fooling with them. Uh, and, you know, that's where they're at, right? So obviously, my personal experience in dealing with these state-owned, state-sponsored, government-sponsored enterprises, whatever you want to call them, uh, has absolutely been terrible. And this is for several reasons. First of all, back during the days when these uh, enterprises were completely government-controlled, uh, the management was basically made up of, of politicians and, 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 and party hacks and things like that. These were not basically, these were not business people. They were not experts in the field or anything like that, right? And that had a lot to do with their underperformance, especially if they were put in a market where they had to compete against uh, a, a professionally trained private sector management. Uh, they would fail virtually every time, right? So that's number one. But also there's this. These agencies or or corporations they were government sponsored or government backed for a reason most of them were not profitable and they could never really be profitable over the long term and that's why the government stood there as a backup to take the hit right when uh when eventually their business models failed and that's basically exactly what's happened right even until today Neither one of these three pay a dividend, so it's really not worth investing in them for income, and and their share prices are basically poo-poo, right? No, avoid them at all costs. Now, there's also a larger lesson to be learned here. There are other government-sponsored um, or government-backed or state-owned enterprises that could, and I, emph I emphasize could, be publicly floated in the next few years. These would include the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority, uh, one of the largest utilities in the country, based mostly in the South, uh, and um, but they have a quasi-governmental function in addition to just providing uh, electricity to people. And it's that quasi-governmental function which will which make it uncompetitive compared to other pure uh, profit-driven utilities, right? Keep that in mind. Then also there's our national rail system, Amtrak, right? Now, uh, Amtrak has been well known for not being profitable. And to be honest with you, it probably could never be profitable in the current structure, right? And if it ever went to a complete free enterprise structure, uh, the prices would have to go up, service would have to be slashed. Uh, it's in question it's a big question of whether this thing could ever really exist as a uh, private company, but they're kicking it around in the halls of Congress and elsewhere, you know, keep that in mind. Then of course there's good old post office, the U S postal service, right? You know, every now and again, they kick around the idea of uh, privatizing it, maybe even selling its shares on the stock exchange. Really? Well, could they ever compete against UPS or FedEx or some of the other systems? I think not. This thing is huge. It's bloated. It has enormous pension costs. All of that is a part of its quasi-governmental system. No way, right? No way. And then, of course, there is uh, the old Guinea Maid or Jenny Maid, right, which is basically a sibling of uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. They're also in the mortgage industry designed to uh, facilitate home ownership, mostly for low-income people. Uh, and it has the same potential threat as investing in uh, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. Don't do it, right? Don't do it. My personal opinion, after researching all of these 
structures, all these companies. And oh, by the way, there are some others, right? In fact, the government owns uh, a lot of uh, programs, co corporations, many, most of them insurance programs designed to provide, uh, you know, insurance for farmers, for uh, flooding, for other things. And they provide this on a government level because if, as a private enterprise, uh, they could never survive, right? If, if they're ever privatized, never invest in these uh, corporations. All right, so that's just some thoughts from my end uh, and perhaps you could utilize this going forward. Thank you much.